<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can install a MM3 mod chip in an original PlayStation. Now, this tutorial is going to be a little bit different and maybe a bit vague, and I'm going to apologize for that, but the reason why I'm doing that is because there's so many iterations of the original PlayStation that it would be difficult for me to get a hold of every model and then show it specifically in here. So with that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm showing my own PlayStation here, which is a 5501 model, and I'm going to try and have the diagrams here, but also down below in the description, there's also going to be a link to the diagrams where you could check it out and see which model of system you have and how you're going to be installing the mod chip. So first off, what you will need to do, obviously, is you will need to grab your PlayStation, flip it over, and see what specific model it is, and then you're going to follow the diagram. If you have a 5501 model, you can follow this as is, but if not, you're going to have to adapt it to your own system using the diagrams that are available. The first thing you need to do here regardless is you need to get your mod chip set up. So the MM3 is burned onto a little pick chip like so, and you could either purchase it pre-modded, I recommend from Eurasia for about $4 and five dollars shipping or you can go ahead and burn your own if you want to do that there's going to be a link down below where you can follow a tutorial i made on creating your own mod chip either way if you have that and it's not been wired i would recommend taking the pins and kind of just flattening them out as i showed right there we're next going to go ahead and clean up the pins you can flux them as well too and then you're going to be tinning each one with a little bit of solder and then solder some wire to each one of them now the wire length i noticed it's really dependent on what you want to do with if you want it to be really clean and have it be exact or you just want to put general wiring length in there so you can kind of eyeball it with whatever you want to but either way on screen there's also going to be a diagram showing the exact pin out so you know which pin is what number and where you're going to have to solder them to on the board. For this, we will not be utilizing pin 2, so I did not forget to solder anything on there. We just won't be utilizing it. But what I'd recommend afterwards is go ahead, kind of tug on the wires lightly, make sure they are safely in place, and then clean up any extra residue you might have. After that, you can also insulate the chip by wrapping it in electrical tape or doing whatever you want to with that. I'm going to be using electrical tape for this, and then we can move on to the console itself. So now that you have your chip all ready to get soldered in, you have your console taken apart and you have the board in front of you, you need to identify again what console you have and where the chip needs to be soldered to. Thankfully with my model right here, everything is in kind of one little area, so I don't need to go all over the place, which is really convenient. What I'd recommend here is go in, identify every single point, clean it with some isopropyl alcohol, and then use some flux to put on each point to make soldering easier. After that, we're going to be tinning each point and then soldering each wire to its respective point as per the diagrams that are available. Before continuing on here, I'm going to have a few of the diagrams matching to each PlayStation model. Go ahead and find your own on here and take note of it. If you want to screenshot it, that's fine. Or if you want a better image that's available and warning, they are kind of low quality images. So I was doing the best I can. There's going to be a link down below in the description where you can get the diagrams and check them out yourself. Now the reason why I was so diligent on fluxing and tinning and cleaning everything properly is because I've noticed the original PlayStation is a pretty delicate system when it comes to soldering on any of these points. I've actually flooded off several points before on several other systems, so you want to make sure your iron's not too hot, you want to make sure you're not just keeping it on the system for a longer period of time than needed. You just want to go slow and be careful with this, so be careful with any model that you're working on. And that's why we have the flux to make sure that everything is nice 
nice and everything works out well when we're getting everything soldered into the system. But following your diagram, all we're going to do is match up each pin to each wire to each point on the system. Now, as you can see, everything has been soldered into the system. So what I do is at the end here, I take my electrical tape, slice off a little bit of it, and then wrap it around the chip like so. The reason why I wait until the very end is because sometimes while working on the chip and getting it all installed, a wire can come loose from one of the pins. So that way, if one of the wires does come loose, I can go ahead and just solder it back on while I'm still working on it as opposed to removing the tape and getting it all done. But as you can see, you kind of just want to get it done like that. And then what I do is take some isopropyl alcohol and clean up all the points gently. Now you're going to need to find a specific point for your system where it would be comfortable to have the chip in there. Thankfully, since this is on kind of the bottom side of the console, really all I need to do is just kind of push it into an area where it's a bit flat. But aside from that, at this point, you're done. You should have everything installed properly in there and you can and you can now test your games and make sure they work. Now, a couple pieces of advice, if there's anything that's not working, for example, if your system's not spinning up the disc, if it's not booting up any games properly, uh, if it's doing anything weird, like it's spinning it too fast, too slow possibly, you're going to want to check your work, make sure you didn't damage anything, make sure no wires came undone, and most importantly, make sure all of the wires and pins and points match, because I've messed that up several times. One issue with the MM3 mod chip, though, is that it's not 100% compatible when it comes to booting all the time and by that I mean occasionally there's going to be times where you're going to pop in a game and it will just not boot up the game but normally if you restart the system it will work just fine as long as you have some solid boots going on here you should be ready to rock and good to go on here anyways this is Mr. Mario signing off thank you all for watching everyone if you enjoyed this tutorial a like would very much be appreciated and if you absolutely hated it a dislike is fine as well too